We're ready to go. That was the message from the US last week. The Syrians called it the drumbeat of war. Well, the rhythm is slower now. So how does this pause affect what the US is planning? Let's take a look at this map here. America's hardware is in place, make no mistake, and it's not going away. Five destroyers already in the area, repositioned to the eastern Mediterranean and capable of launching Tomahawk cruise missiles for targeted strikes. And over the weekend, we heard more is on its way. The USS Nimitz aircraft carrier, along with its entire strike force of five more ships, that's considerably more firepower. It's heading from the Arabian Sea to the Red Sea. From there, Syria is within striking range. US military officials say they will also use this pause to reassess which ships will be used for a strike. And they'll also look again at what sites to target. Now, we understand air bases like these ones inside Syria are, the most, are among the most likely targets. The Syrians can't change their location, but they could theoretically move equipment and personnel. But think back to that intelligence report released by the US last week. It referred to something called geospatial intelligence. Satellite pictures to you and me. Any big movements, the Americans think they can track them. They also say they intercepted communications between senior Syrian officials. And don't forget social media, people inside Syria communicating with the world about what's going on. The US and the UK relied on this open source material for those intelligence reports on that alleged chemical attack last month. Meanwhile, for residents of Damascus, we're hearing one report that bread prices have tripled since President Obama said he thought the US should attack just a couple of days ago. And of course, there's little pause in the fighting. Already more than 100,000 Syrians dead. And this week, the UN will probably announce the number of Syrian refugees has passed 2 million. Almost 10% of the population has fled.